What does it look like to do ministry in the metaverse? Find out in a second, because it's time. You're listening to the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast, part of the TCD Podcast Network. Hey, heroes, my name is Tom Pounder, and this is the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast. This is the podcast where I bring on ministry leaders. We talk about how you can do ministry more effectively in this very digital and online world. And today I'm excited because I have a first-time guest, Stuart McPherson. He is a VR slash metaverse pastor at his church and he's been doing ministry in the metaverse for a number of years and he's making an eternal impact in the lives of other people and so today we talk about what does it look like to do ministry in the metaverse it's kind of like a 101 type of thing but the reality is no matter what we talk about he's got a new book dedicated just to churches to learn how to do ministry in the metaverse and what does that look like so we hit on the we hit on some basics But most importantly, we see the impact that his ministry in the metaverse is happening. So I'm really excited to have Stuart on. But before we get into that, I do want to highlight the Church Digital. At the church.digital, the website, we've got tons of coaching, cohorts, blogs, and podcasts. Tons of resources for you to do ministry in the metaverse, online, digital, whatever online environment you're in. We've got resources and tools to help you so you can be more effective today. So if you've never checked out The Church Digital, go to it today, thechurch.digital. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into the interview, talk about Metaverse Ministry with Stuart. All right, with me right now is Stuart McPherson. Stuart, how are you, man? I'm doing good, Tom. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm glad to have you on the podcast. We We've known each other virtually, like online for a while now, um, yeah. but we've never we've never met in person. And this is actually our first time that we get to have a little one on one together. So I'm excited to have you on. Yeah, dude, I'm excited to be here. You're right. Like probably over a year, if not longer now, being connected virtually and yeah. follow you on Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it these days. And yes. Yeah. I feel like, look, here's the thing, Tom. I feel like what I do is uh, I see things that you post on there and I'm like, what is the most thought provoking question back or like the most off the wall answer I can give to some of the questions that you ask on there? And I'm like, how do I stump Tom today? That's kind of become my mission when it comes to your tweets. Oh, oh, that's good. Well, at least I have friends of mine who purposely like go out of their way to be awkward with their responses to me when I'm posting on certain things. And I'm like, dude, you cannot say that on my, on my Facebook page or Twitter page or whatnot. So it's like, I'm just grateful you haven't gone to the overly awkward thing. (laughs) Just wait, just wait. Yeah. Well, Stuart, I know you and I know exactly what you do and uh, you're doing a lot of great stuff. That's why I'm excited to have you on, but someone listening today may not know who you are. So Give a quick little bio about who you are, where you're from, and what do you do? Yeah, so uh, yeah, Stuart McPherson. Um, I work as the VR campus pastor for Lakeland Community Church. We're based out of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And um, I think probably the thing that stands out the most in that introductory and that statement is just the idea of not campus pastor, but VR campus pastor. So uh, two and a half years ago at this point, Lakeland uh, decided, hey, we wanted to try to plant a church within virtual reality. Um, at the time, I was sitting as the small group pastor. And so our leadership, our senior pastor and executive pastor came to myself and our next gen director and said, hey, we want to do this. We would like for you guys to be the ones that spearhead this for us. Um, and really the thought process behind it was uh, he plays video games. He knows that language. I do not. In fact, the last uh, video game console that I ever owned was an Xbox 360 that I bought in order to play Blu-ray videos on when that was a thing (laughs) off of a credit card. And I still get Dave Ramsey emailing me, telling me how ticked off he is that I did that, but it's okay. He'll (laughs) forgive me at one point in time and I'll forgive myself as well, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I I say that just to say I I don't do video games. This um, hasn't really been a part of my culture or anything that I do for a while. So Um, The idea behind it was let our next gen director who speaks that language, who um, speaks our, our, our uh, DNA really well, bring him into the mix. And then the idea was, and if we, if all we get out of it at the end of a six month trial is a small group that's meeting out of the VR space, then we would consider that a win. Well, six month trial is now turned into two and a half years and me sitting as a full-time VR campus pastor. That 
That is awesome. Well, again, I'm glad you hit the whole video game thing because I think there's a misconception that in order to be good in the online space, you have to play video mm-hmm. games. Like, yeah. and uh, listen, I will play video games, but I'm not a I'm not a gamer. Like, I I like Mario. I I think I like more old school, you know, games than I do anything that's currently happening today. Yeah, for sure. I, here's the, I love that you're hitting on that and bringing light to it because. Um, I think this has kind of been a new thing that God's been working on, like for me, when it comes to vision casting, like church in the metaverse, it's just the idea. Like, I think when you hear virtual reality, the first thing that you think of is probably gaming. And that's what I did. Right. And still typically now I still think VR is gaming. Uh, but really there's probably two arms when it comes to it. Like there's going to be those who see VR as strictly for gaming purposes. So Beat Saber and Darth Vader and all that kind of stuff. But then there's this other group of people, which I fall in this line and this is primarily our audience that we're reaching in VR is strictly social VR. So in the same way that you would see social media, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all those other ones, there is platforms that is strictly for social connection and that's what we're doing ministry at right now that's awesome well i'm i'm excited about this i've said with people before uh, because i'm the online campus pastor at my church and I, i said while i i don't feel like i can be effective in the metaverse i know that there are people in my community my church community that can be so what can i do to set them up in virtual reality and i love the fact that you have a podcast um that you guys talk about this well talk to me a little bit about your podcast first before we get into your book what how how did that come about and what has been the 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 response that you've gotten uh, from you guys doing the the podcast yeah so um we got a podcast. It's called the Metaverse Church Podcast. I co-host it with my buddy Goose. Uh, Goose and I got introduced to each other because he does Metaverse ministry uh, with Cornerstone VR. Um, and we actually hired Goose to build our world for us when we were in alt space before Microsoft uh, shut that one down. But um, I never saw myself as a VR Metaverse individual, period. Um in fact, I remember when an article came out from by DJ Soto about VR Church, and I sat down with a whole bunch of people at the last church that I worked at, and I was probably the loudest voice in the room saying that this is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of in my life. Um, and so uh, sitting in the seat as a VR campus pastor, I ended up just really seeing like, man, I see what God's wanting to do in a place like this. I see where real kingdom advancement can happen. You know, 171 million active users of virtual virtual reality, and probably, I say 90%. I, I would say easily 90%. I say it's higher. Like probably 98% of those people um, are atheist, agnostic, or hold to some other religion outside of Christianity. So <clears throat> the field is ripe for harvesting in those areas, and that's what I ended up seeing was there are people who are coming into those spaces. <clears throat> excuse me that won't that they'll tell me I won't go into a physical church building but yeah a virtual reality church shows up and they'll find themselves hopping into there and it might be because they think that it's just a joke at first and then they realize that it's an actual church service that's going on but really the opportunity to advance God's kingdom all around the world just through a simple thing called a headset um I just saw a great need for that and so I ended up coming to Goose and just said dude you're already doing this. I'm now doing this. I'm having fun doing this. What if we just created a uh, content that we can just get out there to people? That's just simply that it's all about church and the metaverse. And let's just bring some, let's just shed some light on this and uh, see what we get from it. So I would say that's been received well. Uh, you know, <laughs> Goose and I have kind of hit a hiatus on it for a little bit. That was really no real planned uh, decision, but my wife and I had our third kid and summer hit. So, you know, seasons of life, things happen, but we'll get back to it. But that's really the intent is just bringing some awareness to the need for the church to be in the metaverse and two guys who are doing it, just having fun talking about it. Yeah. Well, again, I I knew that you had just had another child of your own and congratulations on that. And so I knew you were kind of on a little bit of a hiatus. I'm glad to know that you're coming back because I will say this, Every time you guys release an episode, it was one of the first ones I listened to, because again, 
I don't know a lot about the metaverse and how you can do ministry. Mm. And you guys hit on really important topics. Like one that you hit on a, a while back about, you know, doing ministry with, with minors, knowing that there are minors on there. How do you navigate that? Because I did youth ministry for decades and that was always a thing. You're, you're an adult, you're working with minors. How does that, what does that look like? You guys address that, what it looks like in the metaverse. So if you're learning, wanting to learn more about what life is like in the metaverse and how you can do ministry, I'm going to include their podcast in the show notes, subscribe to it when they come back from a hiatus. It's a, it's a must listen to because they really do hit on a lot of things that will help answer all your questions. In addition to the book that you just came out with. Okay, so you just released a new book. It's called Your Church in VR. Talk to me about that. How did, how, how did this come about and what, what are you excited about with this? Yeah, so one of the values here at Lakeland is just uh, kingdom mindedness. Um, so, and what we mean by that is like, uh, it's not about what just happens here within our building, our system at Lakeland that we are kingdom minded, but we are kingdom minded about what God's wanting to do through his church all around the world. And so since we have been doing metaverse ministry for over two and a half years, at one point in time, my leadership just came to me and said, hey, we think that there is a need for a playbook um, for churches on how to get a church into the metaverse. And uh, can you write it? And so I said, sure. And so simply, that's really what it is. It's, it's just a playbook on how anybody who's wanting to uh, start a church or bring their church into the metaverse can simply do it. So it just gives some really good, like 30,000 foot highlights of what each platform offers, how you would maybe do ministry in those platforms. What's the equipment needed? Uh, you know, the all important aspect of ministry is like the follow-up process. Like you want to be able to follow up with people. So how do you do that um, in those spaces? So uh, that was the heartbeat behind it. Um, I love I love it. I feel like God's like written onto my heart and into my spiritual journey story, the idea of church multiplication. Um, and so uh, in a way I get to live that out through words, you know, mm -hmm. if you will, through a book of like, Hey, we, we want to see more churches planted in the metaverse space just because of those sheer numbers of, you know, and by 2025, you're talking about over 200 million, uh, VR users, again, if you look at it at a percentage level of how many of those people don't know Jesus, like there's just a need for more churches to get into it. Um, and because of that, we just wanted to show simply how easy it is to get in and do it. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you said, you correct me if I'm wrong, you said 200 million VR users by 2025? Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's a huge mission field. And so this is where I always like to tell people when people ask me, Tom, why are you kind of like this little digital missionary with Twitter slash X? There's only like 300 million people there. And I'm like, that's 300 million people who need to hear about Jesus. And in the same way, it's 200 million people who are going to be on VR. And now talk to me real quick, too, about the popularity of VR has been increasing over the years. What what has kind of help propel VR to a new level where more and more people are getting on it. Yeah. So meta first and foremost, right? Like meta, uh, double down and on it, changing their name from Facebook to meta Mark Zuckerberg sat there and said, like, we're, we're going to be doubling down when it comes to this idea of a metaverse. So it brought this heightened awareness of, uh, what that VR space, that metaverse space could potentially look like. Um, you know, Apple just made their announcement back in the summer, June of their Apple vision pro. And I think that brings even more awareness, but I think what is really doing it, like what's the driving factor in all this is you have, um, businesses that are seeing value in virtual reality. And so they're starting to enter into these spaces. So you've got businesses in Forbes, you know, fortune 500, you know, uh, list, they're saying we see value in VR and not only do we see value in it, but we see where we need to hire for this. So you've got these businesses are saying, we see a future with virtual reality, so we need to get in. And so what ends up happening is, and we talk about this in the book, um, like at one point in time, nobody had cell phones other than people who were in the business sector, right? Like the businesses just kind of came to this understanding realization, like, hey, if we put a cell phone in our employees' pockets or we give them a personal computer that they can take home, then productivity goes up. 
They're going to be working past the office hours. We can stay connected to them. Well, in the same lane, if you will, uh, businesses who are starting to develop this VR side of their uh, VR arm to their business are going to start giving headsets to their employees to take home like those right there. And all of a sudden, this idea of a VR headset being more uh, business minded is going to become more consumeristic just because it's in the household already and the kids are going to be asking for it and whatnot, or the the you know, the the employees sees value in it for just themselves. So then they go off and they get one for themselves uh, just to have at home to do whatever they want with it. So the more that we see business buying into this, the more that we're going to see those users uh, and and the uh usage of VR continue to skyrocket. So I, I say, look at what Apple does, look at what Meta does and just follow that trend along with it. And uh, I think it's uh, Henry Blackby that says, look to see where God's already asking or already moving and join him in on it. And that's what we see with it right now. I love that you brought in Henry Blackaby. That's awesome. I, I completely agree with you. And I think it was, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was, I saw last year that last Christmas, the Oculus and a bunch of the Oculus apps kind of things were like one of the top five, like most requested or not even, well, the biggest purchase. It was one of the top five Christmas gifts that people got. So there's a lot of popularity coming along with it. And like you hinted, like, well, like you just said about Apple, whenever, whatever I've seen, whenever Apple has gone in on something, the, the popularity of something goes up even more, you know, when, there were smartphones before Apple got in the smartphone market and then everyone got, it. there were tablets before the iPad came out. Then everyone, like it just became more and more popular. And when Apple comes up with this headset, even though it's really high priced right now, I know they're working on a lower priced one. Eventually it's going to become more and more popular. Yeah. Well, and there's even, I have no proof to actually back this up, but this is just kind of what I feel like, I think the thing that took me by surprise with Apple's headset announcement was the price tag along with it. I thought that they were going to come in somewhere around like a MacBook, you know, twenty five hundred dollars, something like that. And it ends up being you know a thousand more than that. Um, however, I think Apple's playing the long game in this for two different reasons. One, I think that their hand was forced to produce something a little bit earlier than they wanted to. I think if you, I think if we all got the inside scoop on what apple was talking about i think their ideal uh version of an apple vision pro was going to look more like what we have on our faces yeah um in fact i even saw somebody on twitter ask the questions like all right apple announced their vision pro would steve jobs be happy about this and my initial gut reaction is like 100 percent. and then i thought about it a little bit more i was like i don't think so i he, he was always about like capitalizing on space and having no waste of space in the product and whatnot and i look at how big that thing is i'm like i i feel like steve probably would have been a little disappointed with what apple just rolled out now that's my own personal belief my other belief is you know you can look at a price tag like 3500 dollars, and you go well nobody's going to spend money on that but what i heard apple announce uh during their keynote on all that was Apple Vision Pro is going to eliminate the television screen in your home. It's going to eliminate the MacBook. It's going to eliminate the iPhone. It's going to eliminate the tablet. If you roll all of those costs into one, Apple's saying, hey, we have a product. It's going to cost you $3,500, but we're going to save you money in the process because all of those are going to be wrapped up in the Apple Vision Pro headset. So you're not going to have a need for a computer. You're not going to have a need for a TV because it's all going to be sitting right on your face. So that I think Apple's playing the long game in all of this. And so while it is a hefty price tag, it's like, well, I'm no longer paying $1,200 for a new phone every year. I'm no longer spending $2,000 on a new computer every you know five years. Like, yeah. I, I think they know what they're doing. Yeah, for, for sure. It, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, okay, so let's get into some basics real quick. Um, what is the most popular headset? If someone was, to, if a church was to get into this right now, what is a headset that you would recommend them to get involved with? Yeah, I would say the MetaQuest 2. They've got the MetaQuest 3 that's coming out. Um, not sure when this is launching, but like like this week, next week, something like that. I know a guy that's in our uh, VR space is that he's waiting on his to come in. It's being shipped to him, I think, this week on Wednesday. Um, 
but I would say that one, I mean, like the MetaQuest 2 has provided us two and a half years worth of uh, ministry opportunity for what was then like $300. It's now going to be like 250 something like that. And it gets you access to all the main platforms that you would be looking for. So VR chat, rec room, big screen, spatial, horizon worlds, which if you're wanting to capitalize on what Meta is providing, the only way you can do that is through their own headset. So for the biggest bang for your buck, I, I would say that one. Now I'm also biased because that's the one that we're using, but um, no, that, that's good. Um, my daughter has a, a meta Oculus, and so um, and she really likes it. I I've played on it a few different times as well. But I'm like you, or how you said earlier, I'm like dark saber type of guy. Like I I play the dark saber stuff. Um, okay, let's talk about worlds real quick. Um, you you had mentioned worlds earlier. How many different worlds are there, and is there one world or two worlds that you would recommend that if a church is starting to get into this, what world would they get into? Yeah, so the amount of worlds are, I mean, the count's probably endless, but um, in the book, I, we highlight like top five, top six of them that are out there. Um, and even the way that I ordered those uh, worlds were based off of population size, so user base size. Okay. So VR chat being number one, rec room being number two, uh, big screen number three, horizon worlds number four, and spatial number five. Um, and each of them, uh, like I had a conversation with DJ Soto about this and I love the way they said it is like, you got to look at the metaverse and each of those platforms as uh, countries within the metaverse. So VR chat doesn't speak the same as big screen, big screen doesn't speak the same as Meta Horizon. So you've got your Africa, your Asia, your European, your North America continents that are all right there in uh, uh, VR platforms or the metaverse. Um, but for the church that's wanting to get in on it, like, to be honest, like the simplest and easiest, it, it all boils down to what is what it is that your church does or what you're wanting to do church wise in those spaces. Um, all those that I just mentioned are 100 percent free and they provide their own like event boards and all that kind of stuff that you can just use for free just to get started. Um, Lakeland has found themselves in really two two camps right now. So we're in big screen and we sometimes dabble in spatial. Um, now we we do multi-site video venue type campus. So we use YouTube, bring in our live feed from our campus and bring it into virtual reality. And then I'm there as the campus pastor to connect with people, shepherd, provide next steps, all that kind of stuff. So because of that, that's the reason why we use big screen. That's what it's designed for. A community of 15, top 15 people coming in and sitting down, watching the service all together and connecting with each other. So easiest to get into all of them. Um, but it would all just depend on what it is that you're looking to do. If you're wanting to teach live, like if you're a senior pastor and you want to do ministry in the virtual reality spaces and teach the same message that you teach Sunday morning on like a Wednesday night or something, maybe VR chat, maybe spatial, maybe rec room would be a better option for you. But big screen for us is the easy one. This is great. And I just want to remind people that are listening right now, we're we're at a very high level in metaverse ministry. I'm asking very general questions here. Stuart breaks this all down in his book. And so you want to buy the book and the book is cheap. I mean, it's $4.99. It's Kindle. You can get on your iPad. I still prefer the old school Kindle. I don't like reading on my iPad, um, but I love the Kindle. I'm downloading it because I'm, I want to learn about this. But so uh, again, buy the book. I'm going to include it in the show notes. Okay. Let's talk about small groups real quick. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to do small groups or life groups in the metaverse? Yeah. Yeah. Again, right. That was, that would have been the win for Lakeland if we would have at least gotten a small group going. So um, I think what's important for people to know um, is small groups in the metaverse might look different. I think like if you're wanting to do ministry as a whole in the metaverse, um, you're not chasing after, you know, hundreds of people attending your service. Um, the service that you run is probably going to be a small group size either way from the get go. Um, so what we encouraged our team to do was do let's just saturate like the main event boards uh, of the platforms that we're on. So we have a guy who's been on our team really almost since the beginning that he goes in and he does Bible trivia or he does trivia, mm -hmm. right? So he's like, let's do something that's fun. That's going to draw people in. And all the questions are all, you know, biblically based. And every so often he just uh, peppers in there, 
by the way, Lakeland Community Church, we meet in Big Street and, you know, this day, this time, all that kind of stuff. Um, we've ran Alpha in uh, VR. Uh, I've been leading like a Christianity 101 course in Big Screen um, as of late. Uh, and so you're going to have a lot of people that like pop in for the very first time and then they're going to pop out right away. Um, you might have some that will return and then some that you might not ever see again. So you can do small group in there but i would just i would argue that it's got to look different because it is different um you know for it being an online platform where people can pop in for 30 seconds and then bounce if they don't like what they see uh you're probably not going to get it based off of your traditional small group style you got to think what is going to be captivating for the person who's been in from the beginning to the person that comes in the middle and to the person that's coming in at the end um and so for us, like if you're wanting to stay connected for like that small group type uh, system, we say hop over to our Discord and we try to sprinkle that in through all of our different events as well. So if you're wanting to take a next step, like your first step with us past like joining the service or an event in, all, uh, in VR, your next step is to join us on Discord. That way you know about all the different events that we have going on. So you can get a better taste of who Lakeland is throughout the middle of the week as well. So then even on Discord, like we've hosted small groups off of Discord. We've got prayer that happens on there. It's just our community. So, you know, when we when we were first doing this, um, Life Church ended up getting into the VR spaces. They came into alt space. And when Life Church came in, a can of worms opened up, right? And all of a sudden, like we had church is reaching out to us because they found out that we have been doing metaverse ministry for a while. And so they're asking, Hey, how do we do this? What have you guys done? Why do you do it that way? All that kind of stuff. And, um, uh, <laughs> man, I just forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> how funny is that? No. They were reaching out. Go ahead. No, 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 go, you go. Yeah. I, we just ended up finding out like people were asking, Oh, this is where I was going. People were asking like, well, how many people do you see? Right. Because we want to know what's the ROI for, you know, all this and whatnot. And it was fun because I was telling people our Christmas Eve service that we just live streamed. We had like 200 plus people that showed up between two different services. And you're thinking VR like, dude, 200 people like I want to be a part of that. And we looked at our numbers for like the past year of that first year. And um, all of our numbers showed that we had like it was somewhere between like 2000 and 3000 people that had popped in and out of our VR services. And so you hear those numbers and you're like. Oh, that many people like we planted a church and we're a mega church right from the get go in the first year. And I tell people all the time, like those numbers are exciting. Understand that doing VR ministry, it's a long, slow process. Um, and I and I always go back to while those numbers are exciting, the bigger number to pay attention to for us is our discord. So 2,000, 3,000 people in the first year, but 130 people are on our Discord. Those are people who have trusted us with their information. They've wanted to get connected to us outside of VR platform. Um, and so I tell people that 130 is our actual VR campus. Um, so that that's just the importance of that. I'm so glad you hit on this. Uh, there's so much you said right there that I think applies to all of us doing online ministry as a whole. Online ministry looks different than in-person ministry. But that doesn't negate it saying just because you've been doing small groups a certain way for decades doesn't mean that it's got to look that you've got to evolve that thing anyways in person or online. It's got to look different to meet the needs of people and doing uh, ministry in the metaverse. It's going to look a little bit different. That doesn't mean it's less than or inferior. And then I loved how you just said that you have that number that say that Sunday morning number. But you're, the most important thing is that Discord channel because it's real community. People are interacting, praying for each other and encouraging each other. And that's how I see ministry too. It's like, I we, we've we as a church, we've gotten in the habit of just saying Sunday morning, that's the most important number. No, that's not the most important number. The most important number is people who are serving, people who are reading the Bible in discipleship. Those are, you know, those are important numbers. And I'm really glad that you hit on that. And it's exciting to see that you have so many people on that Discord channel. Yeah, yeah. I, every time, right? Every time that we run a service, I expect people to come in. Uh, I just do. Um, sometimes we might only have like five or six people all join us for service. And I'm like, ah, this is a very lightly attended service today. But every time that uh, somebody joins our Discord server and I see us get a notification that somebody new joined, I'm like, 
we just won. We won kingdom territory today just by them joining our server. Our server. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to ask you one last question because I do want people to get your book and I want them to read it. Um, but uh, what about forming a metaverse ministry team? What what are how was that like? Is it challenging? Is it different than forming another ministry type team? Are you looking for certain people, certain types of people? Talk to me about a ministry team. Yeah. So when we decided to move me full time, we treated it just like a regular church plant. So I went after people and said, Hey, we're building a launch team. Do you want to be a part of something like this? We're we're gonna go reach people that the church currently isn't reaching uh all through a headset so what we try to mimic is any ministry like any ministry serving position that we have irl we try to bring into vr as well so a host team prayer team small group all that kind of stuff like we just see the need for each of those in the vr space as well you don't have to have it um but just knowing that i can walk up to somebody who's at our church right now and say hey i need somebody in vr space um, I literally need you to do exactly what you're doing here, IRL, to do that in the VR space. Would you be willing to do that? Um, it's an easy ask. It doesn't. It's an easy ask. It's not. It's not an easy response, um, which I think is one of the things that we have seen. Um, I would probably say that team building, um, if done right, is probably going to come more from within the VR space than it is probably within the four walls of the physical church. And I think a lot of that has to do with what we originally talked about right when we launched this thing. There's two different arms of VR and the arm that people recognize most is gaming. Mm -hmm. And so when you say virtual reality ministry, people are probably thinking, oh, you want me to put on a headset and play a game? Um, and so it turns into a longer conversation. But I would say any... Any uh, ministry serving position that you have, you should probably bring into the VR platform as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what what kind of size team do you have right now who are helping you? Or yeah, what, what what's the size you have? Yeah, um, probably right now about six to eight, somewhere around there. Um, but I think the beauty of it is uh, two of those don't live in like Geneva, Wisconsin. One of them lives in Idaho and the other one lives in the United Kingdom. So, you know, these are just people that we would love to have them serving someplace. And maybe they would have found a place with us uh, serving digitally, like online service, something like that. But they found a home and they found a serving position in VR. And yeah. so, you know, we've just handed over the reins to them and said, hey, however you feel like you could reach people best in the VR space go do it. And so that's where alpha came from. That's where, uh, like a prayer garden, prayer meditation garden came from, which just we had people that said, this is kind of the way that I feel led and how I want to do it. So we said, okay, have at it. That's awesome. Okay. So as we wrap up here, what is one encouragement, uh, that you would give to churches right now, uh, about metaverse and VR ministry? And then what is one thing that you're most excited about as you are in knee deep in this uh, ministry? Yeah. So my answer to that is probably one and the same. Um, so at Lakeland, we have a vision of planting 100 churches in 10 years in the VR spaces. Um, and knowing how easy it is, to be honest with you, we think that it could be more than 100 churches. And we believe that it could be sooner than 10 years. Um, and that's what we're banking on. Um, and so that being said, that's what I would say to churches right now is like, Look, we'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to plant a physical church someplace, whether that's a multi-site campus or starting a new church in some community of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. But yet for $250, you can bring your church in or start a church in the metaverse space that has the potential of reaching hundreds of millions. So um, yeah, my answer to that would be one of the same is like, the return of investment on that, like that's a no brainer, you know, like I'm pretty sure my discord says, uh, my bio and discord says attacking the gates of hell and advancing the kingdom, like one headset at a time or something along those lines. But it's the truth. I mean, like since we got in the two things, two of the biggest things that we learned or learned and surprised us, I would say, um, the first one being, uh, we were shocked by the age difference that we were reaching than we thought we were going to reach. Like we for sure thought that we were going to be getting millennials and Gen Z and all that kind of stuff. Um, and while they are high users, 
they're probably more on the gaming arm than they are on the social arm because like we had one guy uh two three months into us doing this we started broadcasting our services and when we started doing that he says to me hey Stu, i gotta ask you a question like is is everybody at lakeland just like super young and i'm just like my back hurts when I get up in the morning and my knees crack. So I don't know what you mean by super young, but I mean, yeah, I would say that we have a pretty youthful, you know, uh, team for the most part, but, but why? And he goes, well, it just seems like everybody there's like twice my age. And I was like, wait, hold on. What? And what I started connecting was he was joining our service and he's telling me that he's like twice my age, but he invited his sister to join our service, which I'm assuming that means that they're about the same age and she's inviting her boyfriend or a friend from the UK to join our service, which I'm assuming that they're about the same age. I'm like, dude, we're not reaching the demographic we thought we were going to reach at all. And this is amazing. So that was one of the big things that uh, we learned in the process of it that we were pretty excited about. Um, and then, uh, man, I forgot again. <laughs> I just so I just came back from a conference talking about all this. Um, and uh, man, I'm so sorry. I wish I could remember what the second no, one was. But but, but that that's really <laughs> really exciting. And I I will say this. Um, I think there's a big misconception in, in regards even to online ministry that it's a younger generation's game. But the reality mm -hmm. is, my dad is 77 years old. And he still attends Zoom meetings two or three times a week with doing these Zoom Bible studies. It started because of COVID, but he didn't stop doing them. And they didn't stop doing them. And I think there's a lot of the older generation that can pick and learn how to use the smartphone really quick. They can learn how to use the camera stuff. They, they may need some coaching, but the reality is there's a lot more older generations on online than we think. Yeah. And I remember what the second thing was. So you're yeah. right, right? Like... All of a sudden you brought some normality to the use of like zoom and online ministry and once you brought in that normality then everybody's like okay this is a real thing let's run with it i'm one of those people you brought some normalcy to this and i'm like okay let's run with it but the second thing on top of who we were reaching um in the same lane as that was where we were reaching like we were literally reaching people from africa from europe from brazil from canada uh, that were joining our service. And it was just like, man, like we're literally getting the opportunity to plant, plant seeds of hope all around the world from just a single location through a headset. And so we have a guy that's at our church that he's like super evangelistic in nature. I love this guy to death. Um, and he asked me, he's like, Hey, Stu, you guys have been doing this VR ministry for like two months now. Like, what do you love most about it? And as not a, a metaverse guy, like I hadn't really sat down and thought about that question. Uh, or if I, what I was even loving about doing this. And so him asking just kind of made me pause for a second. And I just told him, I was like, dude, I became an international missionary without having to leave my home. Yes. Yes. People who may not ever get the opportunity to hear the name of Jesus, all of a sudden are finding opportunities to find it. Like we've had people who are in places where their borders are closed off to the Bible and closed off to the name of Jesus. And somehow they found their way into a metaverse church and hearing the name of Jesus for the first time. And I can only imagine, uh, I, I can only imagine that there will come a time where I take my last breath on this earth and take my first one in eternity. And I'm going to be introduced to people who uh, family lines were impacted forever because one of their family members entered into a metaverse church um, and generations were impacted down that family line because of that. Um, and I'm like, dude, that's fun. That's worth it. Like, I'll never see your face in real life. Yeah. But God provided a way in order for you to get to know him. And it was all through a headset. Yeah. God's ways are different than our ways. And nobody could have imagined this 10 years from now or 10 years ago, or even maybe even five years ago. But the reality is that you guys are killing it right now in the metaverse and you're you're making an, an internal impact for the kingdom of heaven. And I, I just get encouraged again. I love your podcast. I can't wait to read your book. And I want to encourage everyone to do that as well. Stuart, before I let you go, though, tell people how they can connect with you. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, two mainly big ways that you can do this. I'm on all social media platforms. Um, but if you wanted to hop over to our Discord server and join us there, just lakelanddiscord.com. Uh, that, that's the invite link. I'll get you in. Um, if you want to know more about what we're doing VR wise with Lakeland, uh, lakeland.church backslash VR. We'll get you onto that page. 
Um, and if you're just wanting to really directly get connected with me, you can also go to stuartmcpherson.org and that's where you can find like the podcast and everything too. That's awesome. And you're active on Twitter and that's the most important thing. So <laughs> hit them up on Twitter slash X. Again, I'll, if you missed any of it, I'll have it all in the show notes. Just click on the show notes. Uh, Stuart, it was awesome having you on. I can't wait to have you back on the podcast and uh, continue to chit chat back and forth and see what more stuff is happening in the metaverse. So thanks for being with me today. Of course, buddy. Thank you. All right. So what stood out to you? What encouraged you? What challenged you? What kind of blew your mind or made you think a little bit more about Metaverse and VR ministry? I know that this is a ministry that I am fully supportive of. However, I also know that this may not always be for me. I mean, I, I'm i not on the Metaverse as it is right now. I'm an online minister, but I'm not in Metaverse. But there's somebody in your church, someone in your ministry that maybe is connected to the Metaverse or VR how can you mobilize them to do ministry in this area? The mission field is ripe for harvest. Use the metaverse for ministry purposes and see what God does. I really believe that this is going to be a great thing that's going to be coming up down the road for all churches to be invested in in some capacity. But I would love to hear from you. Share your comments in the comment section below, or you can even hit me up on Twitter at, or should I say X? Hit me up on Twitter slash X. At TA Pounder is my handle. I would love to get connected with you uh, there and talk a little bit more about the metaverse. Stuart's on there as well. I've got all his links in the show notes, so you want to make sure you check out that as well. All right, here as well. Thanks so much for being with me today. As always, if you enjoyed the podcast, subscribe to it. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple, Google, all the different platforms. Go and subscribe to it today on the platform you like it. Also, if you'd like to give me a rating, I would love that as well. Give me a rating and share it with some of your friends. God's doing some great things, and I'm going to continue to bring on ministry leaders to help us do ministry more effectively today. But until the next one, I hope you have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week, and until next time, have a great one.